Hi, my name is Bonnie Barker. I'm with BonnieBabeCrochet.com and this is video number one of the Divine Textured Throw in Pillows. Um, this will be a crochet along um, and to begin you're going to need about I believe it's 10 scans of the Red Heart with Love or your favorite yarn. Um, this this scan has approximately 370 yards, 338 meters. Um, so you'll need 10 of those, so 10 times 370 is approximately um, 3,700 yards. Sounds like a lot, doesn't it? And that's if you're including uh, one pillow with that. Now, if you don't want to jump in and, and, and make a, a huge project right away, you can just start by purchasing one of these and just making the pillow, which is made um, doing two of the squares that I'm about to show you. Okay, crochet hooks. Your main crochet hook is going to be this one, size K or 10, um, which is, um, si I'm sorry, it's, it's uh, 10.5 uh, in, in U.S. sizing, and it's 6.50 millimeters. Um, and for the outer trim only, uh, that's the round that's going to be crocheted around, you're going to need a size J or 10, which is a 6.00 millimeter crochet hook. You'll eventually need a yarn needle, but we're not going to need that for a while. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. The first thing you're going to want to do is go to the redheart.com um, site. You can you can just either Google this under, you know, if you just Google Divine Textured Throw and Pillows, this should come up as an option, or you can just go right to the redheart.com site, or you can go to, um, well, actually, that the link will be also included on this video if you, if you look at it on your computer. Um, I wanted to encourage especially those who claim to not have any reading ability. You, you, maybe you're someone who likes to follow videos and you're like, you don't understand how to read video. Uh, I'm sorry, don't understand how to read crochet patterns. Well, I want you to, to, I want to encourage you to go ahead and download this pattern. There's a lot of very useful information, including the gauge, which I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on because um, it's not that important for this project. Um, but anyway, I want to encourage those of you who aren't comfortable reading patterns to go ahead and read along with us because I am going to be um, posting on the video uh, what I am doing and the crochet language used um, to explain that. And I think the more you see that, the more you'll get comfortable with this and we'll be able to um, you know, tackle other projects without having to sit through a tutorial. I really hope that this serves you. Another reason for printing out the pattern is it has this nice little diagram in the back which is going to show you how um, the squares are going to be placed together. Now we're not going to have to worry about that to one of the la later uh, videos but, but I think it's just important if you can go ahead and, and get this printed out and follow. I really want to see more and more people learn how to read these patterns. If you can read the text messages you know on your on your cell phone from, from your children and others. I mean, if you can learn how to read that, um, the, I promise you that the abbreviations used in, in um, crochet, in the crochet universe is actually easier. Anyway, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, let's go ahead and start. The first instructions are with larger hook, that would be size K hook, and A, which would be in reference to the color. There's only one color that we're gonna, I'm gonna be showing you. Um, that color is referencing other colors you could use for the pillows, but for the most part, that's not going to matter. The instructions we need now is chain 36. So let's start out with our slip knot, and we're going to chain 36. I like to chain by fives so I can keep better track, so I will show you how I do that. One, two, three, four, five. Then I reposition six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, and one more, 36. So I have my chain of 36. Now for row one, um, 
we're going to single crochet in the second chain from hook and then each chain across and then turn. We will have 35 single crochets at the end of this row. So second chain from hook and I'm just going to do single crochet all the way across. Now if you notice I'm actually working on um, putting going into just one side of the chain. Some people want you or would prefer to work in a back bump. It's not really necessary in what we're going to do because we are going to come to a border round at the end. So I just find it easier to work along the side of the chain. If you have another method, feel free to do that. Okay, I'm going to finish all the way across to the end and then I will show you the turn. Now I've come to the end. I've crocheted a single crochet in each chain. I'm going to chain one, turn. Now the next two rows are under the heading of the low front ridge. Okay, so row two, I'm going to actually work only in the front loop. Okay, only in the front loop. And I'm actually going to skip the first one just because it just is going to look better if I do that, but this will not affect our stitch count coming back on the other row. So I'm simply working a slip stitch. If you can see what I'm doing, I'm just going into the one strand, the front loop only, and just pull it through, pull it through, just like so. I'm going to work this all the way across. And I'll show you the end. Okay, now I've worked the slip stitch and all the stitches across, and I'm also going to work one right here in the turning chain. Okay, this will just help things even out at the end. I'm going to chain one, turn. For row three, uh, I am not going to work in the turning chain. I am only going to work in the remaining loop of the single crochets. Now this first one might be a little tricky to see. And we're just working single crochets all the way across. Let me give you another view. Try to instill some confidence in you here. So we have this, these single crochets. And this is actually going to be the front side facing. So you're going to have this little border or bump here that's going to um, this ridge is going to actually help frame the stitches that come after this. So I'm going to go ahead and finish all the way across. You should have 35 single crochets. Okay, I just wanted to mention one more time that, that after you come to the end of this row, you do not work in the turning chain. There actually is not a turning chain to work in, but um, we don't need to do that. And our stitch count should remain 35. Okay, we're going to chain one. We're going to turn to begin row four which is now the cable pattern. If you need more instruction on this, I do have um, another video on my YouTube, Bonnie Bay Crochet YouTube channel, uh, if you want to just study this particular stitch. Um, but anyway, maybe you can just pick it up as we go along with it now. Okay, for the cable stitch, we're going to single crochet in the first stitch. I'm going to chain three. I'm going to skip one, two, the next two stitches, I'm going to single crochet in the third stitch. So, so far it looks like this. Now this work gets a little bit tricky. We're going to turn and we're going to work only in the chain three that we just made. And I just work, just like in the beginning, I just work in one side of it. You don't have to work in the back bump or any of that. Just one little loop on each side. So I have three single crochets, one in each of the chain. Now the single crochet that we made at first, I'm going to do a slip stitch there. Now I'm going to turn this again. And now working in the two stitches that we skipped, I'm going to make a single crochet in each of those. And that completes our first cable. Okay, let's do that a few more times. One two, three, chain three, skip two, and single crochet in the next stitch. I'm going to turn, working in the chain, just one loop of the side is fine. I'm going
going to single crochet in each of the three chains, just like so. Then we're going to slip stitch in that single crochet, turn, and single crochet into two skipped stitches. Okay, let me do this um, two more times. One, two, three, there's three chains, skip two, and the two that we're skipping are stitches that haven't been worked in yet. Single crochet in the next stitch, turn, chain three, I'm sorry, single crochet in each of the chain three, one, two, three single crochets. Now I do a slip stitch, turn, Working in the two stitches that were skipped, a single crochet in each of those. I'll do it one more time. One, two, three chains, skip two, one, two, and then one single crochet. Turn, single crochet in each of the chains. One, two, three, then I do a slip stitch in that single crochet, and then I turn, working in the two that were skipped, single crochet in each of those. Okay, I'll give you a, a view of what this looks like. It's a very nice textured stitch. I'm going to go ahead and finish this row, and then I will show you the next. Okay, I've come to the end of my row. I should have 11 cables. If you have more or less than that, ugh, you may want to um, double check what you've done and try again. Okay, that leaves one stitch at the end that hasn't been worked. I'm going to go ahead and work a single crochet in that last stitch. Okay, now I'm ready for the next row, which is going to be row number five. Okay, I'm going to chain one. This can be a little tricky, so you may want to, you know, try to pick close attention here so we get the right number of stitches in the end. Again, our stitch count is always going to be 35 at the end of each row. Okay, we're going to single crochet in the first stitch of the row. Next, we're going to put two in the next stitch, and then I'm going to pull, notice I'm pulling back this cable a bit, I'm going to put just one stitch here. Now behind each cable, you're going to have three stitches, and this is the way it's done, all the way across two stitches in the next one and if you need to pull back the cable here put one here we are working in those those um, single crochets two in the next and then one in the next space so that I'm having let me go ahead and show you a little bit so we actually have you know three stitches behind this three stitches behind this cable three stitches behind this cable plus the one that we started with, just to be clear. So I'm going to do this all the way across. Two stitches in one stitch, and then one single crochet in the next. So two, and pull this cable back, and then one. I'm going to do this all the way across. Now that we get to the very end, we've worked, you know, two stitches and then one behind each cable. I want you to work one final single crochet. It's going to be in the turning chain, right like that, okay? Now I did say earlier that you'd have 35 stitches in each round, well, or, I'm sorry, in each row, but of course it's harder to count, you know, with this uh, cable row. Just know that you'll have 11 cables in that row, but after row um, number five, you should have 35 single crochets. And for those of you who are kind of new to reading patterns, um, the stitch count will only be mentioned in most professionally written patterns only when that stitch count changes. If it never changes, you'll just have the stitch count at the beginning and nothing else will be mentioned. Um, with well-written patterns, if the stitch count does change, then there needs to be some indication of that. Alright, so I've chained one and I've turned. I'm now going to 
work rows 6 and 7, which simply say repeat rows 2 and 3, which was the low front ridge. So just like we did down here, we're going to do the same again. We're going to, and, and also that you're going to be doing that many times in this square. All right, we're going to skip the first. We're working only in the front loop of the previous row, and we're going to work slip stitch all the way across, just like we did rows two and three. Okay, now that I've worked this all the way across, I wanted to show you the last the last stitch, which is, which is working it in the turning chain. And the reason we do that is, is without doing that, it, 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 the ends just aren't going to look so even. So I go ahead and um, pick up the next one. Sometimes you have to work with those strands. Do the slip stitch in the turning chain. Chain one. Turn. Now, again, I do not work in, this, in the turning chain because that would be adding a stitch to the row. We don't want to do that. As long as we just work in the single crochets, our stitch count does not change. So just single crochet in the remaining loop, just like so, all the way across. Okay, now that we've come to the end of, end of our row, this is the end of row 7. I'm going to chain 1, turn, and row 8 simply says, okay, chain 1, single crochet in each single crochet across, do not turn at the end of this row. Okay, so it's just going to work, working through both loops. Incidentally, unless it says to, to work through a single loop or front loop, you're always working through both loops. You know, just single crochet all the way across. Okay, now we've worked the single crochet all the way across. I'm going to chain one. And the instructions at the end of this row said do not turn. Um, now we're going to begin what is referred to either as the knurl stitch. Another name is the crab stitch. And some people call it the reverse single crochet. Okay, the reverse single crochet is probably the most descriptive name. Now, as I work this stitch, I'm going to go from left to right, uh, which is basically crocheting backwards if you're right-hander. If you're a left-hander, you're going to be going from right to left. Okay, and we are only going to be working in the front, only in the front loop only. And on top of that, I want you to skip the first um, stitch here. We're going to start going backwards and we're going to come into the second front loop. I'm going to just like so. Okay, we're just doing the motion of a single crochet. I'm going to do this a few times. This is a little tricky. I, I will say this, it might be something you'd want to practice, but relax with it. Don't try to manipulate the way the strands fall. Um, just, just, just kind of put your hook into the front loop, pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through and then go to the next the next loop just like so I know I'm making it look probably easier than you're gonna find this but with a little bit of practice um, you, you can learn this just don't think about it too much um, it, it, it's funny how seasoned crocheters generally struggle with this the most um, I've had beginner students who've been crocheting less than a month or two, um, or I guess I would call them confident beginners, pick this up because nobody told them it was too hard and they, they picked it up right away. So if you're a seasoned crocheter, hang in there. Again, don't try to manipulate where the strands fall. Now if you don't like this stitch, you know, feel free to substitute with something else, but you're going to want to be careful how you do that. Um, so that you don't have the square, you know, more of a rectangle shape. You're going to need these to be square when you're done. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and f well, I'm just going to finish this this row with you so that you can see how it goes. I'll go ahead and finish this. I'll show you the ending. Okay, I've come to the last, the last two stitches. 
I'm going to do another reverse single crochet and then the very last single crochet now this is not the turning chain this is the single crochet I'm going to work a reverse slip stitch just a slip stitch okay without yeah and it's not a it's not a single crochet it's a slip stitch and the reason I do that again is in an effort to keep this edge uh, somewhat even now I'm going to chain one and now we're going to work from right to left and we're going to work let me show you the, see the remaining loop here that is left that we didn't work in we are going to work a single crochet in each of those loops all the way across I wanted to show you the last two stitches because these can be a little bit a little bit tricky. There's one and there is one more stitch here. Now if you're ever in doubt as to whether to crochet one more stitch or not, you can always go back to the beginning and count to see how many single crochets and like like we said again and again, there will be 35 in the row. Okay. Now for the next row we're going to chain one. Um, and this is row, row number 10. Hold on. Nope, this is actually row number 11. Okay. We are going to single crochet in each stitch across. Working through both loops, single crochet all the way across the row. Okay, at the conclusion of this row, um, go ahead and turn the page to the second page of the pattern so we can now begin rows 12 and 13. Let's just take a good look at what we've gotten so far. Okay, we have the low rid, low front ridge, the cable row, low front ridge. You should be getting good at that. We've got um, a row of si single crochet, then the knurl or the reverse single crochet, and then another row of single crochet, single crochet, um, now we are going to repeat rows two and three, which is the low front ridge. Okay, as we do these again and again, I may spend less and less time on them just to give you an early warning because I don't want you to be too bored. All right, so we're going to skip the first loop. This again is worked in the front row, front loop only. We're going to do slip stitch all the way across. Remember that as you finish this row you're going to also work a slip stitch in the turning chain chain one now this is row 13 again we're just working in the remaining loop of those single crochets all the way across stitch count should remain the con the constant of 35 okay we're going to work that all the way across Okay, now I've chained one and turned, and now we're going to work rows 14 and 15, which is the which is the cable pattern, which is another repeat of this row. Okay, give you a view of where we have what we have. All right, so we're going to do the cable row again. So just a quick tutorial: single crochet in the first stitch, chain three, skip two stitches, single crochet in the next stitch. We're going to turn and working in the chain three, just one loop of the chain three, we're going to single crochet in each of the loops, which is three chains. And we're going to slip stitch in that first single crochet. Now we turn our work again and working in the two stitches that were skipped, we single crochet in both of those. And we'll repeat that across. I'll do it one more time chain three, skip two, single crochet in the next stitch, turn, single crochet in each of the chains, going through just one loop, and slip stitch in that single crochet, and working in the two stitches that were skipped, single crochet one single crochet two 
Let me do that one more time. One, two, three chains, skip two stitches, single crochet in the next, turn our work, working in the chain. One, two, three single crochets, then do a slip stitch in the next stitch, turn, and working in the two stitches that were skipped, single crochet in each of those. One, two. Go ahead and do that all the way across. And we've done the um, cable all the way across. Now we're going to single crochet in the last stitch. Chain one, turn. Okay, now working in, working behind the cables, we're going to single crochet in the first single crochet and now this is where we begin the two and then the one when you're adding single crochet behind the cable so two single crochet in this stitch I pull back the cable a little bit to reveal that next single crochet and I put one single crochet there I'm going to do that all the way across two single crochet pull back the cable a bit and then one two, single crochet in the next space, pull back the cable, and then put one there. Two single crochets in the next, pull back the cable, and then one. Just go ahead and do that all the way across. Okay, now at the end of the row, remember we're going to put a single crochet in that turning chain just at the end, and that will give us our 35 stitches across. Chain one, turn, now we're going to get ready to work rows 16 and 17, which again is the low front ridge, is another um, set of rows just like this ridge here. Okay, so this will be the fourth ridge of this pattern so far. In total, I believe there are going to be eight, so you'll be really good at this row um, when you finish your first square. Okay, so we're going to skip the first stitch. We're only working in the front loops for the low ridge, low front ridge, and we're going to slip stitch all the way across. And just as a reminder, make sure you work a slip stitch in the turning chain of this row. Again, that does not change the stitch count because the row that counts for continuing the stitch count is the one we're just about to do now. Okay, now this is um, row 17 we're going to work only in the remaining loop the remaining loop of those single crochets which means we do not work in the turning chain and we're just going to single crochet all the way across sometimes it is a, a little challenging to to find the remaining loop but shouldn't be too much trouble you do need to be deliberate in finding it though <laughs> 